What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Paul. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shells. Brian, <clears throat> a new trailer for The Penguin came out. Brian, your thoughts and reaction to The Penguin trailer, the re- most recent Penguin trailer. Um, so I think we get a sense a little bit more of the supporting characters who matter. Uh, that's really a lot of time spent in this. My first thought was Sophia Falcone, who's played by Kristen, Kristen Malati, the daughter of Carmine Falcone, almost seems like the star of this trailer more so than Colin Farrell, who we know is the lead of the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, We get some additional lines from the sun. So I guess we're going to be dealing with the legacy of the Falcone family and shouts to the immortal Clancy Brown, Lex Mm -hmm. Luthor from justice league unlimited, uh, as Sal Maroney, who you saw there in, uh, in the gray hair and of course from Highlander to Kurgan from Highlander back in the day but yeah. um, so that seems like I guess that seems like we're getting the drama between Oswald Cobblepot's rise to power versus maybe what the, the children of Carmine would want mm-hmm. to be doing uh, what did you think what stood out to you uh, certainly the agendas being or the character being put into play here in terms of who's wanting what and there are certainly a lot of adversaries for penguins who have to deal with and 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 converse with, right? Uh, so we get an introduction of that, and I just it felt very Sopranoish, Brian, to me, which yeah. was or right? Godfather, little yeah. Godfather, yeah, too, yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. Body channeling like Talia Shire and so forth from. Yeah, that. Yeah. There is a a, a a a video out there of Colin Farrell in character talk. I think I sent it to you. I don't know if I did. Where he's talking to someone who asks him, where are you from? And he says, what do you mean where I'm from? Where are you from? And then he starts talking about, I'll send you an email. You yeah, better get out, out hand deliver it. And he starts laughing like crazy. Like, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll I'll, I'll send it to your address where you live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was scary stuff, but this is the sort of uh, intensity, Brian, that mm-hmm. we're going to be getting when there is a moment for him that he needs to impose his will. We're going to see that saw side when when he gets the cuddlies from, you know, that tickle tickle baby from from the females, right? We're going to see that side, the vulnerable side of him, perhaps. And we're going to see the ruthless side as yep. well. So there's going to be a lot of interesting, I would say, differences in performances for Colin Farrell's character. You know, I was thinking about shows like, great shows, right? shows like Andor, things like that, where... I, and I remember watching that show and being like, wow, like, you know, Diego Luna is the headliner and it's the show's named after him. But in a lot of the episodes, it feels like he's he's doing the assists. He's the point guard. He's passing the ball. He's not hogging the spotlight. And I almost wonder if this show is going to have a little bit of that balance just because we know Colin Farrell's Penguin survives into the future of the Batman. Mm-hmm. We kind of think we know Robert Pattinson showing up in this show. Maybe Jeffrey Wright's going to show up in this show in a small capacity. So it kind of makes sense that you would spend a lot of time with other characters whose fates are not certain because that's what breeds drama. If you spend all the time with characters where you know the outcome, there's only so much tension you can create, right? But if you spend time with characters who we don't know, maybe Sophia Falcone will be in Batman Part 2 but maybe she'll die in this series. And so that uncertainty, I think, gives the show more gravitas, even if it means Colin Farrell's doing a little less, he might actually be doing more in some cases. So um, he still looks great. I mean, he still acts great. I mean, this is the part that weirdly he was born to play, which you would be like, how you, how he possibly be born to play a part like this? But you could just tell he has fun doing it. Brian, I wonder. And think, take two seconds to think about it. Even if it doesn't take you two seconds, right? To just be like, aha, uh-huh, yes. I want to say this movie title. Out for Justice. Steven Seagal movie? Yes. 
What character does his penguin remind you of? I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I watch it every once in a while just to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I remember Hard the... to Kill better than Alpha Justice. Oh, Hard to Kill is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> so. But in Alpha Justice, the antagonist, I think it was Vince, not Vince, or somebody that he was g- going after because he had done some, some craziness. His character reminds me of that. Oh, if you watch Alpha Justice, anybody out there, if they know they know what I'm talking about. If you've seen Alpha Justice, Recently, if you yeah. have it in your stash and you want to watch some Steven Seagal movies, if you know what I'm talking about, hit that like button, please. Please, please. <laughs> Go ahead. So, no, I think, and also, I uh, believe that was the first time. We knew it was in the fall. This confirms it's in September. Uh, at the end so that means cave crusader august on amazon and then max gives us the penguin in september so i think that was the first time we've seen like a full confirmation that it was that month so that's also pretty exciting so i like brian that they're showing us when this is taking place even yes. though that they've they've uh uh said it from from the beginning when this takes place like sort of immediately after I like that we're being shown that and we're hearing commentary from that. I like his first line. Look at what that madman did. It kind of sets him up opposite the Riddler. Yes. Right? He's already like, he's a villain, but he's like, man, F that guy. Right? Because he still loves his city, even though the reasons he loves Gotham are obviously very different than the reasons Bruce loves Gotham. But, But I thought that was, that's a really, the way he delivers that line it's making you empathize with him and reminding you, oh, the Riddler's the real bad guy. This guy's like, not the real like bad you guy. Like, you right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they shoot this in a way that makes it look like he's, there's that scene of him entering what looks to be the prison. Because then the way the, tra- you go, the trailer cuts it as he's, he's being brought through security of what looks to be some kind of jail or facility. And then the next scene, they show him sitting across from Sal Maroney. But because he's making a reference to the Riddler before that, I wonder, you think he's going into Arkham to confront? I, I want, like, the way that that sequence is shot in the trailer could easily be manipulated to where he's actually going in to see somebody else who maybe it's the Riddler. I don't think it'd be the Joker, but the Riddler would be the logical one because we know he's still alive and he's still in there. I would think it would possibly be the Riddler, Brian. It would make sense. And it would also make, because there's so much connectivity to the previous film, it would make sense for him to, I don't know why he would want to... Confront him? Yeah, I don't know. Confront him. If if Even if they'd let him, right? So, I don't know. Uh, Well, remember, he's not in on the plot to kill Falcone. But the Riddler, obviously, was setting that up. Right, see what I'm saying? So, like, they are connected. They just aren't accomplices, and this show is setting them up as sort of foes in a way. So, I wonder if he is going to have a face to face with Paul Dano at some point. Because perhaps, Brian, this is the reason for his ascension, and he perhaps needs to talk to him because uh, not, not that he needs to, but wants to, right? Right. Because perhaps he has so much dirt on him on Falcone and knows so much. I don't know. But there's certainly not necessarily, it perhaps may be a set up for an alliance in the future. Who knows? It just made me wonder, who is he going in to see? Is he really going in to see Maroney? Or is he getting shown into some other place? Hmm. Which would, Arkham would be the logical other place. So, Regarding Batman's presence, Brian, how, what would you, what approach would you sort of take? Because it needs to be felt somehow, I would say. Well, I think you want to leverage... I think the things that I would leverage would be the scenes we got between Colin Farrell and Robert Pattinson in the movie, right? They they shake him, they, they shake the Penguin down thinking he's the informant, right? That's a, that's a miss. Like, Batman <clears throat> and Gordon make a mistake there. Um, but that's, a, that's an exchange that I think you could leverage in this show because they were face-to-face in that scene. they were both memorable. Right, and they were face-to-face in the club as well. Um, So I think you, and so he knows Batman's a fearsome kind of almost crazy physical opponent. So I think you Mm kind of leverage that of when he's plotting, I think you have to like incorporate 
the design of the plan has to factor in, okay, this can't draw the attention of that guy. Yeah. That's what I would kind of do. I would, I would mention, I would like when you're laying it out or let's say his henchmen, or let's say the other people are bringing the penguin to plan and the penguins like the penguin shoots it down because he's like, no, because that guy that, and then we all know who he's talking about. It'll never get past him. You know, mm. so something of that nature that builds Batman up as this force to be reckoned with, as opposed to dismissing him, which I think would be a mistake. And I don't think they'll do that. Mm. Um, but I don't want a lot of Batman in this show. I just want, no, I don't. Finger, I just I want, want fingerprints. His, I just want I, fingerprints. Exactly. That's all I want. I know he's around and perhaps he's the guy that Penguin is talking to in that first conversation. You say that he's ta- having with somebody. That actually would be fine too. Cause we know they have a relationship where he doesn't know he's Batman. Yeah. So that actually could work. Um, and I would be totally fine for a face to face between the two of them. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, uh, anything else, Brian, in that trailer that sort of caught your attention? Um, I like, uh, um, Superman. He was in Superman, Man of Steel. He was oh, Michael in... Kelly. He's good yes. at everything. Yes, yes, He's yes, good yes, at yes, everything. Yes, House yes, of Cards, yes, Jack yes, Ryan. Yes. He is good in everything. Yes, 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 yes. I like... When I saw him, I was like, oh, okay. I want to see some intensity in this role. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he could be cold and he could be. Uh, I like this character in Man of Steel. They didn't use him a lot, but yeah. he was. Uh, uh, He's really good in Jack Ryan. He's really good in that show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? He would be dope. 100 Bullets. If they ever made a 100 Bullets, he'd be the guy of recruiting. Hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of 100 Bullets. I haven't seen that. No, I'm not familiar with it. I've written, well, there, there's no show. Okay. It's a comic book. Comic? It's a okay, comic I'm not book. familiar with it. Okay, okay, okay. If you ever get a chance, look it up on YouTube with a story and stuff like that so you can so you can see it's very, very um shout outs to uh um Brian Prowse Gaming. He put me onto that. Uh but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh the penguin second trailer that we just got. Does it change anything towards your excitement for it? We, I, I think at some point, Brian, we have to sort of discuss what the impact of this show will be. And I think we might want to do it after we see a couple of episode, episodes, Brian, so that we can really sort of uh, gauge where this could take us and, Brian, the process for the sequel of the movie uh, how that will be affected. And we cannot count out the Superman movie when it comes out and the success that we think that it could have and the next things that James Gunn has in store and how that, those things, some of you know, may know what I'm talking about, some of you may don't, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Because we've talked about it in the past. And we'll probably talk to you in the future if those things come to pass. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Joke Report.